connect wires, many of us uh, kind of maybe default to these little guys. We've seen these little automotive style connectors in there. And, well, they're not great. <laughs> just go look at your trailer after a couple of years being outside using these. You know, there's, they're, just, they're, they're not ideal. Uh, the ideal way, though, is to solder. It's a little intimidating, I think, by a lot of folks because um, uh, maybe you don't have the equipment or you've had bad, bad luck with it. Uh, I'll show you how easy this is to do with just a, just a tiny handful of tools. Um, and I'll, I'll show you. Let's go into the kit right now. There's really just a few things you need in, in your kit. And you know, it's worth $100 or so, you can put together this kit that'll serve you for a lifetime. You'll be able to repair electronics and different things that many, oftentimes we just throw it away because it's not worth the trouble of trying to find someone to fix it. You know, little things that come loose. Uh, I think it's worth it. So yeah, just get yourself a, um, a soldering gun. Uh, just a, you don't, don't have to get anything fancy. Just these, these well, wellers are good. They're probably in the, I don't know, $40, $30, $40 range, not very much. You want some rosin paste flux. Uh, you want uh, a little brush and some um, rosin core solder. You don't want to use the solder you use for plumbing. It, it's, it's not the right stuff. And this right here, this stuff's amazing. This is a 3M silicone dialectic grease type of thing uh, that we use, as well as you know, a good selection of shrink tubing. So let's, uh, let's show you how to prep it, and then we'll, uh, we'll go through the whole process here. Do yourself a favor and, and get a couple of these alligator clips. That you don't have to have those fancy stands you know, if you're just doing this once in a while. Take two alligator clips and clamp them in your vise like this. Now, some of these alligator clips are, have a pretty tight spring on them so take some shrink tubing on the ones you're going to keep in your kit and just melt it on there and that way they won't mess up mess up your wire and this is going to hold things securely and you're just going to get a whole lot a whole lot better job okay so for joining the wire there's a couple different ways of doing it but what I have found to be the best and this is what way granddad always did it is you is you fray the ends of the wire like this you kind of splay them out like this and join them inter in so they intermingle, kind of mesh like fingers together. Pinch one side like this here and start bringing everything together and then twist. Twist this side here and then twist this side over here like that. And that's going to give you the, the cleanest, the smallest, because we're going to shrink. If this is going to be something that's exposed and we're going to put our shrink tubing on there, it's going to be a little more low profile and look a little better. Now we can clamp it into our, our jaws and get everything ready for the solder. I don't think I mentioned you want a, a damp sponge too. Um, any it, just any sort of old worn out sponge would be fine. Now uh, with everything ready, you're going to take your rosin flux, right? And, it's, and we're going to apply that, that on there like that. So just, just coat that on there and that's going to help that. That solder to bind it wouldn't probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have heated that up first and then we're going to get our soldering iron and untangle the cord that hooks on everything okay so this shouldn't take long to heat up so what we're going to do is we're going to put that on there like that just until that flux starts to melt in that rosin and it starts to melt down inside the wires there right and then uh and then Granddad always said you touch that, the end of that there to tin it. I don't know why, I just always have. And we're going to heat from the bottom and we're going to start heating that up until this melts. Now we don't want to touch the solder to the, uh, to the iron. Oh, that took a long time to heat up there. There we go. Now it's now it's sucking in there, just like that. We don't don't put so much on there that that it's going to uh, that it's going to you know drip off. And don't try to dribble it on there. I could probably use a little bit more right there. There we go. That's all. That solder joint looks pretty good. Now remember, this is marginal advice, so uh, take it for what it's worth. Now we want to water waterproof this. This is where we're going to use the the 3M silicone paste. This Having this in your shop, uh, anytime you put together electrical connectors or anything like that is so good. It's so good. And we'll just put a little bit of that on there like that. And then now we're going to do our shrink tubing. Now I'm going to use a piece of clear shrink tubing just so you can kind of see what's going on and what a great connection that this is. So what we can do here is 
Once we have that grease on there, now we'll thread our shrink tubing on here like this and try to, uh, try to be careful when it is to hold that, not to scrape all that, that silicone grease off there um, but, and just place it like that. Now your shrink tape's gonna shrink on the ends about 10%. So I'm always uh, pretty, uh, pretty liberal with that and uh, give myself plenty of shrink, uh, plenty of tubing. Uh, now you can use, a, I'm gonna use a heat gun. You don't have to use a heat gun. You can use a lighter, you can use a torch. Problem with the lighter and the torch is if you're not really careful, they will, it will tend to uh, burn the wire in the housing. Start from the middle. You're gonna start from the very middle and you'll see that that's starting to shrink right there. And then work to the outside edges. And you'll see, I think you can see, you'll see that silicone making that seal as, it, as the shrink tape tightens around the connection. And it, ideally you want it to squeeze out like that side right there. Probably should have put a little bit more on the housing, but that looks, uh, that looks pretty good right there actually. Now once that's cool to the touch, uh, you can uh, clean that clean that silicone off there and you have a really good as good as you're going to get um, a waterproof uh, connection uh, for joining two wires together that's probably going to be tougher uh, than the wire itself.